Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. How many of you counted our readings? <laughs> Seven? Seven. It was eight with the New Testament, and then the Gospel is number nine. And you survived. Congratulations. <laughs> it's the first time that we read all the readings from the Old Testament and uh, the other readings, yeah, the Epistle and then the Gospel. And it was just almost one and a half hour. And uh, we did not put the light so that when you fall asleep, we won't see you. <laughs> but we let you stand to keep you awake every time we, after we, every time we pray. I like to share the reflection of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI on a hollow Saturday before I do my homily for Easter. Benedict XVI said, the day of hiddenness of God, Jesus lay dead on the tomb covered with heavy stone. Holy Saturday, day of burial of God, is not that an uncanny way our day? He asked. The darkness of God of this day, of this century, which is becoming more and more a holy Saturday, addresses our consciences. It has something to do with us, too. But despite everything, it also has something consoling about it. For God's dying in Jesus Christ is at the same time an expression of his radical solidarity with us. The darkest mystery of faith is simultaneously the brightest sign of a hope that is without limits. And one thing farther, only through the failure of Good Friday, only through the deadly stillness of Holy Saturday, could the disciples be led to grasp who Jesus really was, what his proclamation truly meant. God had to die for them so that he could truly live in them. End of quote. Jesus has died for us so that he could truly live in us and that we could live our lives in and with him now and for all, and for all eternity in heaven. The great Paschal Triduum comes to a glorious conclusion tonight. On the first day of these sacred three days, Jesus offered himself as a sacrificial victim in the breaking of the bread and on the altar of the cross. On the second day, as his body rested in the tomb, he brought new life to the realm of the dead. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead, as we profess in the creed. Today is the third day, the glorious day of resurrection. The church joyfully applies the words of the psalm to this day above all other days. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Second part of my homily, I like the reflection of Dr. Van Petri on this first verse of our gospel tonight. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week is dawning. Why this is so important for Matthew and for us? Because the resurrection of the Lord is not just about to prove his divinity or to prove that he is the Messiah but it is inauguration of the new creation. Because up until the resurrection, creation is fallen. It's in the darkness of sin. It's full of suffering 
and under the power of death. And Jesus comes to break the power of death and make a whole new universe, to make a new world. And he's the beginning of the new world. His body is the beginning of the new creation. And so it's fitting that the resurrection on the first day of the week takes place on the same day of the week that Genesis 1 describes creation, the first day of the week on Sunday. In baptism, a person isn't just becoming a new creation. They're entering into a life, into the life of the Trinity. Because how are they baptized? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So they are entering into the mystery of the new creation, and into the mystery of the Trinity at the same time. The first book of Genesis, the first chapter of, the, of Genesis is profound, it's moving. And it should be profound and moving to us because it's revealing in a hidden way, but in a real way, that all the mysteries of faith are summed up in it and foreshadowed in it and anticipated by it so that when you connect the Old Testament and the New Testament, it comes alive. You begin to see the resurrection of Jesus in a whole new way. Each one of our Old Testament readings works the same way as Genesis 1 works. It is typological. In other words, it prefigures a New Testament reality that Christ is going to fulfill, to fulfill in himself. So, the sacrifice of Isaac prefigures the death of Christ, the beloved son on Calvary. The crossing of the Red Sea prefigures our deliverance from Satan and sin in the waters of baptism. The wedding of God and his bride from Isaiah prefigures the coming of Christ, the divine bridegroom of the church. The feast of water and wine from Isaiah prefigures the Eucharist that the candidates at the Easter Vigil are about to receive for the first time as well as the catechumens. The promise of wisdom appearing, appearing on earth in Baruch prefigures the coming of God in his word in sacred scripture that we hear proclaimed. And then the sprinkling of clean water from Ezekiel prefigures the gift of baptism and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So each one of these seven readings is typological and they are pointing forward to the new covenant and to the gifts that the sacraments and the mysteries of new covenant, that is, the Holy Eucharist that Jesus instituted on Holy Thursday and Good Friday. The Holy Eucharist, the source and summit of our Christian life. The second reading is the bread's or the epistle is the bridge from the old to the new covenant. The second reading from letter of St. Paul to Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 to 11. And it's all about baptism. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So what is St. Paul describing here? Baptism, in short, are our participation in not just the death of Jesus Christ, but also his resurrection. Baptism is not just our participation in his burial into the waters of death, but also our participation in his resurrection 
from the waters of death through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is poured out into our hearts and the beginning of new life in Christ. It is the beginning of a new creation and that's really the theme that the church is calling us to focus, to focus on at the Easter Vigil. It is the theme of a new creation and resurrection from the dead. As we celebrate Easter Vigil and as we celebrate the most important Sunday of the entire year, the Sunday of Easter, it is critical to remember why Sunday matters to us Christians or Catholics. And Sunday matters for this reason. Sunday is not just the day of the resurrection of Jesus, but it is the day of the beginning of the new creation. And when we die with Christ in baptism and rise with him through baptism, we no longer belong to the old creation in which the worship was centered on Saturday, on Sabbath. We now belong to the new creation in which worship is centered on Sunday. The Sabbath itself was a shadow and it was part of the old creation. But when we die with Christ in baptism, we become part of the new creation. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2174 says, Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week. That's quoting Matthew 28, 1. Because it is the first day, the day of Christ's resurrection recalls the first creation. Because it is the eighth day following the Sabbath, it symbolizes the new creation ushered in by Christ's resurrection. For Christian, it has become the first of all days, the first of all feasts, and the Lord's Day Sunday. And St. Justin Martyr said also, We all gather on the day of the sun, for it is the first day when God, separating matter from darkness, made the world. And on the same day, Jesus Christ, our Savior, rose from the dead. End of quote. That's really what Easter is all about. It's it's that God didn't come into the world just to save us from hell or to save us from our sins. He came into the world to make all things new, to make us holy as children of God, to usher in a new creation. That is good news, the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers and sisters in Christ, in this Easter night, let us ask the Lord to increase our faith in him who is truly present in the Holy Eucharist and make every effort to come and receive him at least every Sunday, a little Easter. Let us live a new life animated by the Holy Spirit whose presence is strengthened every time we receive Holy Communion worthily. And may Our Lady help us all to experience the joy of Easter every time we receive her Son, Jesus, during Holy Communion and whenever we love one another as he loves us. Amen. Amen.